It was a um, uh, Roberta Flack sample, a song called Gone Away. I used to drop my needle on it. I was like, damn, that shit don't never really just come out right when I try to catch that end part. So one day, this dude named Wanda Rio started off as my engineer. I noticed he had a few playing skills and shit. He actually sat in and just watched me go to work, drop the needles on a few joints. So he was like, what you think about this little song right here? I said, yeah, I fucked with it before, but the loop didn't fit. He's like, shit, I go and play it on the reasons all over again. And so what he did was brought the raw version of that play. The, uh, nah, 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 nah. So just keep in mind, we tried sampling it, but it just didn't work. Of course, you know, I brought the drums, the bass line, you know. See, he programmed it, he played it, but I produced and arranged the song. In most situations like that, it's keyboards played by keys, additional but... keys. Yeah, by one of the produced by and arranged by DJ Tim. And I took the track to the studio, um, sat with Tip, you know, because there was a few producers who thought they were going to have the first single. I mean, I had a little cockiness when I, arrogance, a little slight arrogance when I played that track, because I'm like, hey man, if you're ready to go to the next level, this track I'm about to play will take you there. If you do the right thing to it, it's going down. So I just looked at everybody and mass play. Stood up in the corner, man. Motherfuckers jumped out of their seat. Tip started walking around the room, bobbing his head. You know that nigga don't write shit. Started walking around, pacing around for about 10 minutes. Started over, started over. Boom. Da, 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 da. Man, by the time I started over about four times, man, the room was full with niggas, man. And Tip was still able to concentrate. Looking at niggas, everybody looking at him like, niggas looking at me like, boy, that's it. And it's a look that certain niggas get. Like they saw a fucking dead body. This look right here. Boy. Boy. You know what I'm saying? And there well, wasn't no joking in that motherfucker. Next thing you know, dude would get coming in my ear. He said, Don't you know I got you out of G for the church, man? What you know about it? When the beat dropped, when the da da da. That's when he went to the what you know about that. So the nigga knew which tone to put in there, the way to say the hook, man. That shit was like brilliant, bro. Next thing you know, we got a masterpiece. Matter of fact, we're gonna win that fucking Grammy too. Remember I said that? Raw Report. We all winning a motherfucking Grammy. What you know? Believe it. Billboard for like 14 weeks. That's crazy. That was the biggest song I had so far. What you know? That shit stayed number one for 16 weeks. You know, uh, we played that shit to ben, uh, Benzino and Baby had the song first. I never did hear the song that they put to it. So about a year later, I think 8 Ball MJG had the track too. They had a song called Alcohol, Pussy, and Weed. From what T.I. had put to the song, it was a bigger picture. Feathers were ruffled when I made the decision as far as saying, hey man, T.I. got to have this, man. Plus, that's my fucking artist, man. That's my dude, you know what I mean? The screen is way more bigger than what y'all talking about putting to this song. This is a huge track. So, man, I started getting calls from Zeno and Dave Mays and the uh, bro. Y'all never did even pay me for it, motherfucker. We got it straight. Buffy pulled me to the side, yo, Playboy, what's up with the track? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So think about it, ain't nobody mad at me to this day. You know, hope not. It's, and it's really not my fault. It's the artist's fault, or either the AR or the, the record label's fault, or whoever is supposed to be, you know, over in control of that shit. When I make a beat CD, or, you know, when I just pull shit off my iTunes, I'm playing everything that I think is hot to everybody until a motherfucker cut a check. Okay, at least give me a front end, or get some type of black and white showing me, like, hey, we're serious about this shit. If I don't hear from you in about a month, it's gone. They and you haven't cut a check? This is our hustle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is Like, like you can't just sit do. on this work, man, even on some street shit, man. If you front a nigga something, you can't sit on that shit so long. After a while, you be done got rid of your shit and be like, hey, man, damn, you still got five more? Like, man, give me that shit. That's finna be gone in an hour. Same thing with the music. But what I do is let niggas know, hey, you know, this track is out in the street. Oh, okay. I'ma just got them try to come back with something quick. So every, everybody who basically had it, and who had it before T.I., they had that track for at least about <laughs> four months. For more on this Raw Report news clip, visit news.rawreport.com.